हेलो व्यूवर्स आई एम विनय कुशवाहा एंड टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ ड्राइव सिस्टम यूज इन आवर ऑटोमोबाइल्स सो हियर एज वी कैन सी दैट देयर आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ ड्राइव सिस्टम्स फ्रंट व्हील ड्राइव सिस्टम इज द फर्स्ट वन व्हिच इज आल्सो नोन एज एफडब्ल्यूडी इन शॉर्ट सेकंड वन इज नोन एज रियर व्हील ड्राइव सिस्टम and third is known as four cross four you may see uh, written uh, in the back side of some vehicles four cross four so this is four cross four oblique all wheel drive systems so basically three types of drive systems are there and today i am going to explain front wheel drive system <clears throat> so before going to explain you here is a note notice that diagram is in front view and uc uc i a uc stands for universal coupling so you can refer it from here what is it mean by diagram is it front view is in uh, front view when you observe any object in engineering drawing so the view is known as front view so whenever we are observing a vehicle a chassis of a vehicle from front side so the arrangement should be like this so as we can see so many components are here the first component is known as engine engine is the power plant for any system engine gives the power to drive any system so here the engine is the power plant which will run the vehicle friends as the name suggest front wheel drive it is very simple to remember that front wheel drive means whenever we transmit the power of engine to the front wheels only so that kind of system is known as front wheel drive system when the power is transmitted to the rear wheel that is known as rear wheel drive system and when the power is transmitted to the front wheels as well as the rear wheels then that kind of system is known as all wheel drive or four cross four system so uh, as we can see over here the first component is engine which is the power plant which generates the power and that power is going to be used to drive our front wheel drive vehicle so next to the engine is the crankshaft which is coming out from the uh, engine and on this shaft there is a component flywheel is mounted over here friends uh, flywheel is basically a kind of reservoir in the idle condition not ideal it's idle conditions means when your vehicle is not running so it stores the energy next to the flywheel is clutch assembly friends what is the purpose of clutch assembly friends whenever you press the clutch pedal there comes the gap between flywheel and clutch so no power goes further from flywheel to the forward direction means to gearbox and so on so clutch is the device which decides that the power has to be given in the forward direction or not whenever you press the clutch pedal uh, clutch gets disengaged and no power goes to the system further and when you remove your uh, foot from the clutch pedal it gets engaged again and the power of the engine goes to the gearbox and there it is modulated and now uh, when we are going forward from clutch to the gearbox uh, what is the need of gearbox friend uh, this is somehow uh, similar to the functioning of accelerator but accelerator has a very narrow range of a speed variation uh, friends when we are going on a different types of road conditions like uh, somewhere there is low traffic so we need less speed but there we need more torque and where the traffic is very uh, 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 sorry i am repeating again where the traffic is very low we can speed up our, our vehicle over there so there we need high rpm so the high speed and we need less torque but in case of very heavy traffic our vehicle has to move 
with low speed so we need a uh, very high torque or you can understand it by another example that when there is a body or object is in a static condition so when we want to uh, uh, when we want to uh, get it in dynamic condition we need very high torque once it gets the dynamic condition then we need less torque and we uh, want high rpm so the gearbox has the arrangement of different types of gears engaged with each other and by uh, uh, by selecting a particular gear like first gear second gear third gear fourth gear uh, in case of manual transmission system we get different types of torque and rpm combinations over here at the first gear we get highest torque and minimum rpm at the highest uh, if we select the highest uh, gear so at, uh, means at this highest gear you will get highest rpm and lowest torque over here so this is the arrangement of gearbox where as per the situation of road condition we select a particular gear and we modulate the uh, power which is coming from the engine we modulate according to the situation and we module uh, after modulating the power we give this power to this differential gear assembly in the differential gear assembly as we can see that the uh, that one of the gear of the gearbox is engaged with the uh, gear of uh, differential gear assembly which is known as crown wheel uh, and uh, uh, there is a specific purpose of differential gear and which is very wide to explain so i will explain the specific purpose of differential gear in our uh, next lecture but for the time being you should know that this is the very important part whenever we turn our vehicle so we need a differential gear this differential gear splits the power to half axle or drive shaft on the left hand side and in the right hand side friends now uh, the power which is coming from the gearbox comes to the differential gear and this power from differential gear is split to the two uh, half axles on the left and on the right now what is uc what is the purpose of uc uc is universal coupling friends as you can see over here that differential gear level is quite above from the uh, center of this tire these two tires the differential gear level is quite high so whenever we want to transmit power on some inclination so we need universal coupling over there for transmitting the power at some angle so uh, with the help of universal coupling we can drive and with the help of differential gear we can split the power into this shaft and into this shaft and in this way our vehicle runs means the power of the engine comes to the front wheels only and which drags the whole vehicle in the forward direction now friends i am coming on the advantages and disadvantages of the front wheel drive system so i am coming on the advantage of the front wheel drive system as you can see friends that the engine and the other assemblies are just mounted on the uh, on above the uh, this uh, these front two wheels means if you open the bonnet you will observe the uh, this assembly engines engine and other components are almost uh, uh, mounted in between the front two wheels at some above level so as we can see over here that the power of the engine through the gearbox is just to be transmitted on the front wheels only so there is no distance between uh, this gearbox and this differential assembly so we don't need any propeller shaft to transmit the power of gearbox through the uh, uh, propeller shaft to the wheels because they are almost adjacent to each other so there is no heavy propeller shaft so the weight of the vehicle gets reduced and the fuel efficiency gets increased 
so and the second uh, advantage is that transmission losses are very low in case of front wheel drive vehicles now i am coming on uh, the uh, disadvantage of front wheel drive system so the disadvantage of fr uh, front wheel drive system is that these two front wheels have to serve two purposes basically the first purpose is to drag the whole vehicle in forward direction so the power comes to the front wheels not to the rear wheels so this is the first purpose and the second purpose is that whenever we want to turn our vehicle we have to steer the same wheels so means we are giving the power to the front wheels and we are steering the same wheels so two purposes are to be solved uh, by these two uh, front wheels so ease of steering is quite uh, 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 not easy you know so this is all about front wheel drive system thank you very much friends